This is Peter with Zila Industrial Repairs LLC. To clarify a few things up front, I am not affiliated, employed by, or however else connected to ICAR. The machine you see here, the picture and the sticker, is from one of my customers who did welding training through me and my company and then successfully passed his aluminum welding certification test. In this video, I will explain a little bit the way how the aluminum test is set up, what it takes to pass the test, what machine, what requirements you need, and I will show a weld and I will show how the weld is tested to give you a closer idea of what you're getting into if you're looking for welding certifications in the auto body industry. I can train you, but I cannot and will not conduct any certification testing. This picture here shows you the configuration of a butt joint with backing, thin material, one millimeter coupons. Here you see a lap joint, thin on thick. This is a one millimeter coupon on top of a two and a half millimeter coupon. And this here is a butt weld thick on thick with backing. All coupons are two and a half millimeters thick. As you can see in the pictures, none of the coupons has been cleaned yet. No wire brushing, no acetone washing. Uh, also, these coupons are laying on a wooden table right now. In an actual test situation, these coupons would be clamped on a welding stand, either facing vertical up or overhead. You saw an actual weld that a customer of mine did. This is what it's supposed to look like when it's done. Now let's take a really close look in slow motion at this weld and let's go through a few things here that I would like to point out to everybody who is trying to do an aluminum welding test. How and why is aluminum MIG or aluminum pulse MIG welding different from steel welding? Number one, the stick out, the contact tip to work distance. As you can see right here, the gun is very close to the piece, maybe quarter inch, three eighths at the most away, which in this application is very much too close. The stick out is preferred on aluminum welding between three quarters of an inch and one inch so that the spray arc can fully develop and the arc can lay down nice in the joint. So here, as my customer makes progress and welds up the joint, you can see right here where he increases the contact tip to work distance and all of a sudden things go much smoother for him and things lay down so much nicer for him. So the key is not only to have the correct machine settings, which HTP provides a sheet with settings for the actual aluminum test with the machine where you can dial the machine in really close but also the actual hand-eye coordination to find the right contact tip to work distance. So the previous weld was a vertical up. Here we're looking at a overhead weld and the same thing here, slight push angle little bit too close and right there the distance increases you can see the wire coming a little bit out of the nozzle before then it turns into a spray arc and all of a sudden things flow pretty well nothing is dripping pretty much spatter free this is how the weld is supposed to look like so with the HTP Pro Pulse 200 a 200 amp Synergic Pulse MIG machine you meet all the requirements to take your welding test so that you can get your body shop in a position where you can pass a welding certification test that is required for a lot of insurance companies and insurance work. And if you have, just like my customer, have one of those plaques hanging in your waiting room and you want to make sure that when it comes time to retest and recertify that you don't fail a very expensive test, 
you can email me and book some training lessons with me. So now let's look at the finished weld here. Um, there is the butt joint with backing. The way how this is tested is the plate is bent back and forth. The tear out has to happen out of the parent material just like we saw in the video. The weld has to stay attached to the backing. Both sides are being broken off. This is the other side. And this would be a pass. There is a certain um, distance that the weld needs to cover. It can't be less than a certain distance. It can't be more than a certain distance. The weld has to remain on the backing. It has to tear out, out of the material. And if you do this, then you pass your test. And if you have any questions regarding the equipment and the products used in this video, you can get this information from HTP America. This is their phone number and their website. And they sell all the equipment that is necessary to take a test like this from the machine to the wire and even the coupons, the same ones that are used in the test, so you can practice with the real deal.